glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. We're live. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God, family. Welcome, welcome to Faith Talk and Miracle Moments. There is a miracle with your name on it. Let's get this going here. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Welcome, 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 welcome. I welcome you to Faith Talk and Miracle Moments. Don't watch alone. I want you to love. I want you to like. I want you to share this broadcast and bring many people on. Yes. Let's get this here. As your week going, I believe you're having a fantastic week. And it's even going to get better. Yeah, this is Faith Talk and Miracle Moments. Don't watch alone. I want you to love, I want you to like, share, and bring more people on. Okay, can you hear me now clearly? All right, praise God. There is a miracle for you. There's a miracle with your name on it. God is said to do great things for you, for me, for us. Wherever you are, let me know where you're watching from. I'm live on my Facebook page at Bishop O. Olafe. I'm also live on Twitter. I'm live on uh, Periscope. I mean, Twitter, yeah, I'm live on FM TV Live. I'm also live, you know. Let me know where you're watching from. When I see you, I'm going to love on you. I'm going to recognize you in a minute. But I want you to like, I want you to share this broadcast. There is a miracle for you today. God has a word for you. I am God's servant carrying your miracle package. And it's going to get into your hand today. We're going to be looking at the word of God and some great things are going to happen. But I don't want you to watch alone. I'm taking out time to share this and I want you to do the same. Yeah, let's, you know, be a partner uh, in deliverance and faith for somebody. Be a partner for deliverance and faith for somebody. Share the word of God. I mean, share it on your timeline. Bring more people on. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I'm doing the same right here. This thing takes a minute. So just share, like, love, subscribe. Let me know where you're watching from. This is Faith Talk and Miracle Moment. There is a miracle coming your way. I have a mandate from God to speak God's blessing to you right where you are. Get ready for a change of story. Get ready for an unforgettable encounter with God. Because I believe shortly from now, you will have a story to tell. You begin to dance and celebrate and rejoice because God will heal you. The power of God will empower you. I encourage you, motivate you. Your story will change. New, new things are going to happen in your life. If you believe, you're going to see the goodness of God. You got to believe, though. You got to believe in what God is said to do for you right where you are. So I want you to like, I want you to love, and I want you to share this uh, broadcast as I am also doing the same thing right here. And I want you to be patient with me for a minute. It takes time to share these things. So just click the share button and then um, get ready for your miracle. Yes. Father, I want to thank you. I thank you for miracles. I thank you, oh God, for what you are said to do in my life, in the life of the person watching right now. I thank you, oh God, for the door that is about to be burst open. I thank you for the blessing that is about to be released. I give you praise for miracles, signs and wonders. I know that God, you're going to do great things in this special moment for my friend watching right now. Lord, I pray for your blessing. I pray for your visitation in the life of this person watching right now. Let me see. If you leave a comment, I can see you. Okay, I see somebody's already on. My wife is on. Praise God, woman of God. Thank you for joining. Yes, a consistent joiner and uh, a follower of this great broker. So let me see you when you are on. This is Faith Talk and Miracle Moments with Bishop O. Olafe. Your, 
man of God that brings deliverance and the word of blessing into your life. I'm going to be talking to you about the price, the price for deliverance. What is the price for deliverance? Uh, because God has been staring this word in my heart and the Holy Spirit is not done blessing you yet. So if you can hear me loud and clear wherever you are, let me know where you're watching from. This is Faith Talk and Miracle Moment. I want to encourage you to subscribe to uh, my YouTube channel. If you are watching me on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Faith and Miracles TV uh, YouTube channel. And the good news is that we also have a 24-7 Faith and Miracles TV network fmtvlive.com. Uh, you can always go there. Let me see. I can get that to you right now. You can watch 24-7 Faith on the Go, fmtvlive.com, you, you know, where your faith can be, you know, uh, turbocharged, where your faith can be inspired, where the word of God can come to you 24-7. So I want to encourage you to, you know, uh, bookmark that um that site fmtvlive.com you can always get faith on the go but i'm also encouraging you right now to subscribe to my youtube channel uh our my youtube channel is fmtvlive.com so i want you to subscribe to that uh on youtube yes that's different from the fmtvlive.com but faith and miracles tv that's our YouTube channel. If you're watching on YouTube, so just subscribe right now. Hit the subscribe button. Anytime I come on, you're going to get notified. If you're also watching me on Facebook, I want you to follow me at Bishop O. Olafe. Follow my Facebook page, and then you're going to see great things follow you. When you follow me, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. If you're watching me on Twitter, I want you to follow me on Twitter also at Bishop O. Olafe. That's my Twitter handle right there. Follow me so that anytime I have, you know, an inspired word, I'm going to I'm going to tweet out something that will be a blessing to you and your life is not going to be the same again in the name of Jesus Christ. So what you are watching, Faith Talk and Miracle Moments, take time out to uh, like and subscribe and share this uh, broadcast and God will bless you. Yes, I have a word from God and I'm going to be talking to you I'm going to be talking to you today from the heart of the Holy Spirit. God has put a word in my heart. I'm waiting for you to share, to like, and also leave a comment. Leave a comment. Let me know where you're watching from. Before I get into the word, let me get this across to you. I want to encourage you. Yes, I'm waiting for you to share it. You need to share this broadcast. Yes, I want to encourage you to get my books. They will make a good gift for people at this hour. You know, I have, you know, some books that God has enabled me to write, and they are all ebooks. You can, I mean, you could get the hard copy if you want, but essentially they are ebooks. You can get them on Amazon.com. This is a very powerful bestseller here. Seven ideas that can revolutionize your life. Ideas rule the world. You need this book. It, you know, these are nuggets. The seven seven series are my nuggets. I have seven seven ways to solve uh, problems. Seven things to do to make. Uh, uh, to make more money, seven seven things to do when disappointment happens. I have those seven 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 uh, nugget series that I call them seven 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 nugget series. You know, seven ways to solve problems, seven success secrets for the believers, seven things to do when disappointment happens, seven ways to make more money, seven ideas that can revolutionize your life. All these are my nugget series, and they are available to you on Amazon.com. If you want to visit our book i mean our website often.org going to get those their ebooks but i also have healing is a children's bread a book for healing and deliverance very powerful book prayers that open up the mind for creativity yes god is a creative god and god wants to fill you with his creative ability so there are prayers you can pray that can open up your mind for creativity prayers that work wonder for increase another very powerful book here Prayers that work wonder for increase. It is God's plan to increase you more and more, you and your household. But you need to know how to pray. It says, Paul planted Apollo's water. God gave the increase. God gives increase. God wants to increase you, but you need to know the prayer to pray. And that this is a prayer manner. It will help you. Another book here is Go Forward. This is a book for unstoppable progress. Every season of your life, you need to keep making progress, advancing in victory into great things. So get ready 
for great things are going to happen in your life. But today, I want to pray and I want to talk to you about what the Lord has put in my heart. I want to talk about the prize. What is the prize for deliverance? What is the prize for deliverance? There should be. Uh, there's Deliverance is real and there's a prize for deliverance. What is the prize? That's what we're going to look at today. What is the prize of deliverance or the price for deliverance i think i'll be more yeah what is the price for the price for deliverance let's do that it's better that way the price for let's make it a four there yes thank you jesus what is the price for deliverance i want to this this teaching this message this whatever you want to call it, is going to change your life. So if you just can pay attention in the next few minutes, I'm not going to be talking for long. I'm not going to be talking very briefly, but I believe that you're going to hear something. You're going to receive something that's going to change your life and reorder your story. So let's get into it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now as we look into your word. Thank you, oh God, for your spirit. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, oh God, for your plan. I'm praying in the name of Jesus for this person watching me right now. I'm praying for a miracle. I'm praying for a touch, a visitation in the life of this person. I'm asking, oh God, that you bless this person right now in the name of Jesus. In this few minutes, as we look into your word, let this be a transformational moment for this person that is fellowshipping with me in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, I give you praise, I give you glory, and I call it down in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining me. I'm Bishop O. Olaofe. This is Faith Talk and Miracle Moments. And I want to talk to you about, you know, something very powerful. You know, we're going to be celebrating uh, the, the birth of Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ came to the earth with a mission. Jesus Christ came to the earth on a mission. And when he came, he announced his mission in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Jesus announced his mission, and his mission is to provide a solution for humanity in the areas of our problem. Jesus came to proffer solution to our problem. And Jesus identified seven major areas. I think it's six uh, major areas of human life that needs solution you know so jesus came to bring solution to humanity and he identified the areas of life that man needs solution and this and the areas are found in luke chapter 4 verse 18 jesus said the spirit of the lord is upon me he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor the first thing he dealt with is the concern of lack poverty want in humanity so jesus came to offer solution to uh, that situation. And then it says, you know, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, has anointed me to bring healing to the brokenhearted, healing to our body, healing for our spirit, healing for our mind. You know, uh, when there's a distress, there's a disease, we need healing. And Jesus came to provide healing. And I've dealt with, you know, those two components. And the third thing he said, he said to proclaim or to preach deliverance to the captives. And I've been on this for, you know, quite some time now. But today I want to even go deeper. I want to show you what it means. You know, Jesus, by announcing his mission on earth, even as people celebrate Jesus, they celebrate his birth, they celebrate his visitation to the earth. Many people have not been able to take advantage of what, uh, of the mission of Jesus to the earth. And I believe that today, as you hear the sound of my voice, you're going to receive a miracle. You're going to receive something, you know. Jesus, you know, is a deliverer. Jesus is a healer. Jesus came as a lifesaver. That's what Jesus, that's the ministry of Jesus. He came to bring deliverance, healing, and, you know, salvation to our life. And Jesus contrasts his mission on earth with that of the devil. The devil, you know, is a deceiver. The devil, you know, uh, is a destroyer. The devil is an oppressor and a tormentor. So the devil's ministry is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He's a deceiver, he's a destroyer, he's an oppressor, an enslaver, and a tormentor. But Jesus' ministry is to heal, uh, to bring deliverance, and to uh, save uh, humanity, to bring, you know, 
uh, to be a lifesaver for, for us, you know. But importantly, you know, uh, Jesus began to talk about the need for deliverance. And that tells me that deliverance is real. Uh, deliverance talks about captivity, bondage, enslavement, you know, uh, oppression. When a person, you know, uh, is not free to make the choices he or she wants in life, that person is in bondage. When a person cannot choose what, what they do, where they go, how they live, that person is in a form of bondage. Bondage or deliver when a person is in captivity, a kind of prison, limitation. When there's a restraint, when there's a limitation in a person's life, the person is in captivity. Whether the person is in chain, and there are there are different things or different reasons for uh, captivity. But you know, and I've been trying by the spirit of God, I have made an attempt, you know, to be able to pass across to us various reasons why people are in bondage or why people can be in captivity. And I want to encourage you to, to look into my previous brokers. You're going to be able to glean some more things there. And if you watch fmtvlive.com, you're going to be able to get some things. But today I want to talk to you about the price for deliverance. What price? You know, if deliver if captivity is real, which it which it is, and bondage is real, there's a price to be free. God, you know, Jesus came to set the captives free. God does not want us to be bound. God does not want us to be in bondage. God does not want us to be limited, restricted, or restrained. God wants us to enjoy life to the full and to enjoy it abundantly. But of course, we have an adversary. We have an adversary, you know, we have enemy. There are many forces that, uh, that bring affliction you know, bondage into a person's life. So we're going to look at today, glory to God. We're going to look at what I have tied to the prize for deliverance. You know, what can a person do to be free? But before we begin to look at what a person can, what a person can do to be free, let's analyze, let's look into the word of God and find out, you know, what can, what kind of bondage a person can be in? What kind of how, do, how does a person know he is in bondage? How does a person know he is in captivity? Because sometimes somebody can be in bondage and not really know that he or she is hell bound. But if you can know, then you can be free. If you can know, you know, the reason for captivity, you know, um, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. In 1 Samuel, I'm a man of God, so I'm going to read the scripture to you. You see, the Bible is the manual for living. I never get tired of saying this because it's very, very important. Where's my topic again? What is the price for deliverance? Yes, that's the topic of my discourse with you today. You know, the Bible, the Bible is the manual for life. God, in his infinite wisdom, you know, uh, instructed men to write down their encounters with him and what he has said. And the goal of that is so that we can also, you know, be able to benefit from what has been written because there is nothing new under the sun. There is nothing new under the sun. The, in fact, the wise man Solomon said, the things that has been is that which shall be. The things that has been is that which was and that we shall be. So there is nothing new under the sun. Life, you know, life is not supposed to be a mystery. Once you begin to understand, you know, uh, God's perspective, and that's why the Bible is there. The Bible is a compass for our living. The Bible is a guide for us. God has, the Bible says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, the way to doctor, conduct, direct our life is profitable for doctrine for reproof for instruction so that we can know how to go and correction so that we might be thoroughly furnished and equipped for a glorious life so the bible is a book for is a manual for living if you if you want to live a successful life if you want to live a victorious life if you want to live a triumphant life i will admonish you to read the Bible, to read the Bible, read the Bible a lot, and also learn to read books 
that are inspired by the Bible because you're going to find answers today, uh, questions, the concerns of your life, the bugging issues of life. You're going to find solution. You're going to find direction. You know, we you don't we don't have to struggle. We are not supposed to struggle through life. We're supposed to walk victoriously in life. We're supposed to walk victoriously in life, even if there are obstacles, there are barriers. We know how to overcome our obstacles, how to be able to overcome our obstacle and also, you know, uh, uh, remove the barriers on our path, how to be able to navigate in life and to walk into victory. So now I'm talking to you about, you know, uh, deliverance. In 1 Samuel chapter number 16, the price for deliverance. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, we see here the Bible talked about a king called Saul. Saul was the first anointed king of Israel. You know, and the Bible says he had a trouble. He had a problem in his life. You know, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14, in case you want to write down the scriptures. And I want to encourage you to write down the scriptures, even if you have never read the Bible before. This is very important. Just write it down and just make reference to it. The Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit began to trouble him. That tells me, listen to this. That means there was a trouble. <laughs> there was a trouble in the life of this great man. He was a king. But even though he was a king, he had trouble in his life. Trouble, when trouble comes, you know, and the Bible says the life of man is full of troubles. I think Job said that in the, in the, in the Bible. He said, he, said, he said the life of man is full of troubles. You know, when a person begins to face trouble in his life, then the person needs deliverance. There are many things that can cause, that can, that can bring or cause the trouble. But once ever there's a trouble, there is a need for deliverance. And in the case of Saul here, we saw clearly that his trouble was caused by an evil spirit. So there is the Holy Spirit. There is the evil spirit. You know, Saul was a, a, a great person. He was a king. That means he was successful. He was also a person of authority and influence because he was a king of Israel. He had success. He also has influence. But he had a trouble that his influence, his, his authority, you know, his wealth, his resources couldn't solve. My God. You know, yeah. So, and that tells me that's why he, need, he needed a deliverance. In fact, the people around him, his servants, in verse 15, Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, an evil spirit is troubling you. You know, the people around him could see the trouble he was facing. And they were able to narrow it down to understand the, the reason for his trouble. But anywhere you see trouble in a person's life, that means something is coming against you that is working against the person. Something that is tormenting a person, either an oppression a torment or a discomfort, you know, anything that, that afflicts. When you talk about trouble, you're talking about an affliction. My God, this is very powerful, you know, but he couldn't help himself. And, you know, there are situations in life where we don't know what to do. And that tells me, and that's why Jesus came, because when a person is in bondage, when a person is in when a person is in prison, not just the four walls of human prison, circumstances of life can imprison a person. You know, uh, situations of life can imprison a person. There are forces of life, forces of nature. You know, but here we see here, and I, I think I, I, I mean very interesting here. They said an evil spirit was troubling Saul. So you see, there are troubles, my God, there are troubles that are physical and there are troubles that are spiritual. <laughs> and you can't solve, I feel the Holy Ghost now. 
You can't solve a spiritual problem with natural resources. You know, yeah, some, some problems have their root in the realm of the spirit. So in order for us to have a wholesome life, a total life, a life of breakthrough and victory, we need to know how to balance and how to operate in the spirit and in the natural, in the physical. Many people are limited in life because all they know about life is the physical material world. So their problem can be rooted in the spiritual and they might not recognize that is a spiritual problem. Like Saul, for instance, is a king. Some people might say, oh, he has a leadership problem. But his servant realized that, look, your problem, the problem he had was a spiritual problem. They, they were able to narrow it down to identify that he had an evil spirit troubling him. I don't know what is troubling you today. I don't know what is troubling you. I don't know the trouble that you are in. I don't know what is afflicting your life. I don't know what is causing you heal or hurt. But what I know is that God is not the reason for the heal and the hurt that we face. Because God has come, Jesus, God, I mean, every good and every perfect gift come from God. So if we feel trouble, if we have hurt, if we have pain, if we have condition in our life, definitely it's not God. God is the one that can bring deliverance to our lives. And that's what I want to share. That's what I want to talk to you about today. So even though he was a king, he had influence, he had authority, and I believe he had wealth, but he had a trouble. So how do, how do you get delivered from the trouble, an evil spirit? If an evil spirit is troubling a person, how would a person get delivered? And I've said to us, I think in one of the previous teachings, how do you know whether the, whether the condition you are facing is caused by an evil spirit? Number one, when it is tormenting, when you feel tormented, when a person feels tormented, when a person feels tormented, oppressed, you know, or feel enslaved, that's an evil spirit. When a person cannot help himself, an evil spirit is involved because I think I spoke to the I spoke about this, you know, the, the the how you know an evil spirit in one of my previous teachings, but is I could just say it to you right now. There was a woman in the book in Luke, the Bible said concerning her, you know, she had a spirit of infirmity and she was bound for many years. So when when a situation is persistent for long, when a troubling, yes, thank you, Lord, when a troubling, oppressive, tormenting afflicting, uh, inflicting situation persists too long, then you know there's an evil spirit responsible. When it has gone over and over, over maybe over months, over years, sometimes some troubles go years, you know, that woman had a spirit of infirmity, uh, is it 13 years? Yeah, so you can have a trouble for a long time. Then you know that's an evil spirit. The evil spirit is an oppressive spirit. It's an enslaving spirit. When you feel bound and it, you are bound to that trouble, you are bound by that trouble, you are held captive by that trouble, you can't break free, then an evil spirit is responsible when a person feels like that. The Bible says, then now, but what I want to talk about is the price of deliverance. How was it going to be free? How was it going to be delivered? The Bible says, the Bible says in uh, verse 16 of 1 Samuel chapter number 16, Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, an evil spirit is troubling you. Let now, let our Lord now command that servant which are before thee to seek out a man who is cunning in playing on harp, and it shall come to pass that when the evil spirit is upon you, it shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. So we see here, the, the powerful price for deliverance, I'm talking about the, power, the price for deliverance. What is the price for deliverance? When a person is troubled by an evil spirit, the first, the first price to pay is to get the songs of deliverance, to surround yourself, to surround your environment with the song of deliverance. You know, the the Bible, the Bible talked about uh, songs of deliverance in Psalm 32. Oh, glory to God. Psalm 32 
and verse number seven. Let me read that scripture to you. Psalms 32, Psalm 32 and verse number seven. It says, oh God, you are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. <laughs> oh my God, thou shall compass me about with songs of deliverance. So how do you get to be delivered from trouble, especially the trouble that is caused by evil spirit? It says, God is your hiding place. So in order to be able to make your environment free of the tormenting, oppressing, uh, afflicting power of the evil spirit, you need to surround your environment with the songs of deliverance. You need to play songs that will invite God's presence into your life, into your environment, into your home, your office, wherever you are. You need to invite God's presence. How do you do that? By playing songs of deliverance that will bring the presence of God into your situation. You know, um, glory to God. Yes. You need to play songs that will bring the presence of God. The Bible says God inhabits praises. God dwells in the midst of praises. And when God comes around, every evil force must go. So once there is, once you sense a trouble, once you are in trouble, what, what whatever kind of trouble, in fact, I wouldn't want to subscribe. Whatever kind of trouble you might be facing, one of the ways to rid yourself of trouble is to bring songs, to begin to worship God. That is what it means, to sing a song of deliverance. This man was tormented by an evil spirit, the king. His authority, his human authority, his human influence could not save him. Even though he was a king, his power, his influence could not save him. What did they do? They say, find a person who is skillful in worshiping God. That's why we have praise and worship. You know, we have spiritual songs. You have to be sensitive. You know, if you want to be free from trouble, you have to know how to be delivered from trouble. You know, you the, the Bible says, God, thou art my hiding place. Thou art shall preserve me from trouble. I'm talking about how you can be preserved, delivered from trouble. Thou shalt deliver me from trouble. Thou will encompass me about with a song of deliverance. A song of deliverance will lead to your, you know, you being free from trouble. Glory be to God. So they said to Saul, find, let us find a person that is skillful. Let's, let's hear this. Uh, my friend, if somebody is sick in his body, sickness, sickness essentially, you know, the devil is responsible for most of the sickness that people face. Yeah, this, the, the, to, anything that afflicts your body, inflicts your body, afflicts your mind. The devil is responsible. There's an evil spirit responsible. So in order to be free, play songs of worship. Play songs of deliverance. Get songs that invite and invoke the presence of God into your life, into your affairs. Even if you are troubled by uh, situations and conditions of your life, you feel, you know, uh, you feel bound by troubles, whatever the trouble may be. Bring songs. Even, you know, sometimes the trouble people face could even be lack of direction. Lack of direction. You don't know what to do. You feel trapped. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, in, in the scriptures, in 2 Kings chapter 3, in 2 Kings chapter 3, there's an account here of three kings. The king of Israel, you know, the king of Israel was Ahab. After Ahab died, his son began to rule and to reign as a king. But the king of Moab, who was supplying them, you know, meat and livestock and milk and all that, rebelled against the king of Israel and said, look, 
I'm no longer going to supply what I've been supplying because Ahab, who was the king, had died, and a new king has come. And then there was a rebellion to against the king of Israel. And that means they're going to lose resources. They're going to lose uh, all the benefits they were enjoying by what the king of Moab was supplying. So the king of Israel sent to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. Just follow. I'm going to get you to where I'm going by the Spirit of God. He sent to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. He said, you know, I need you to come and join me and assist me to go and fight against the king of Moab and to bring him back to continue to keep the term of the contract that they ha that we had with him. The Bible says the king of uh, Judah, Jehoshaphat, agreed. And also the king of Edom. So these three kings agreed to go and fight the king of Moab to get him back to the contract that he was in. And as they were going, they got to a place whereby where the water for their livestock ended, the water for the people, the, the army ended. And now there was confusion. And they began to second guess themselves. They began to ask, is it God that has trapped us? Because now we're going to battle and the means of sustenance is lacking for us. The Bible says, and we all have issues like that in our life. You, are, you have your plan. Maybe something was not working and you made a move. Somebody has made a move to go and see, look, this is what I'm going to do. And along the line, you find out that what you need to continue on the journey seems to be lacking. The Bible says, then Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, said, is there not a man of God we can consult to show us our way? These are powerful people. These are powerful people. They are kings. They are men of authority. They have, you know, a physical human uh, resources. But now they have facing a big trouble, a big problem, and they need deliverance. So I'm telling you that, look, in your life, there are times you will face conditions of life, circumstances of life that you will need deliverance. Now they need direction. They need help because they have become stranded in the wilderness of their, of their journey to the battle to getting what they want. You know, to getting what they want, to bring comfort and supremacy to their reign. Now they have become stranded in the wilderness. What are they going to do? They needed a deliverance. And they sent for the prophet. And the prophet came, Elisha, and he began to say to them, well, we're going to get a word from God. We're going to get direction from God. But I need you to get me a minstrel. Get somebody that can play. Get a music playing. Let us invoke the presence of God. Because anytime we want to be free, anytime we need deliverance from trouble, we need God to show up. We need the influence of God. We need the presence of God. We need the ability of God. Get me somebody that can praise, that can play. Get me a minstrel. That's what I'm saying to you. To be free from your trouble. For a person to be free from trouble, you need to surround yourself with songs that will invoke the presence of God. Get worship songs. Play worship songs around you. Bring God's presence to your, to your environment. If you are sick in your body, maybe you are home, maybe you are in the hospital. How can I experience deliverance from this spirit of infirmity? Invoke the presence of God. God is a healer. God will come and heal you. He will come and set you free. Yeah, anytime I go to pray for somebody who is sick, I recommend to them, I say, look, the devil, you know, even if a jam, <laughs> if a jam causes a sickness, the devil who is the enforcer of pain and evil will come and want to take advantage of that situation. So the way to keep the devil out is to surround yourself with a song of deliverance. Surround yourself with a song of praise and invoke the presence of God into that situation, into your life. If you are, if, if you are facing trouble in your life, you don't know what to, what to do, where to turn, how to go. You don't know what to do. Begin to play worship song. Once you begin to play worship song, the Bible says, there is a spirit. There's a spirit in man. The inspiration of the Almighty will give him understanding. When you begin to play a worship song, God will come and inspire you. The Spirit of God will bring inspiration to your life. And you're going to find direction. You're going to know what to do, how to go. 
You're going to be free from that trouble. It doesn't matter how insurmountable that trouble might be. Whatever is bigger than you can never be bigger than your God. Whatever the devil has done, God can undo it. Oh, yes. If the devil, you know, if the devil has been robbing you, God can give you victory. Whatever the situation is, once we bring the presence of God and we invoke his ability, then we see miracles begin to happen. And I want to prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ that there's going to be a victory for you. There's going to be a miracle for you in the name of Jesus Christ. I love what the prophet Elijah said to them. After the mistral began to sing, the spirit of God came upon him and he began to prophesy. He prophesied to these three kings. He told them what to do. And he told them, he said, look, make ditches around. You need water, make ditches. You know, faith will always tell you to do something. God will always show you what to do. And can I pray and agree with you in the name of Jesus? I don't know what trouble might be facing you or what trouble you might face right now. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy direction into your life. I prophesy direction. I speak an end to the confusion of your life. So the Bible says, and he prophesied and said to them, watch what he said. He said, you shall not see the wind. You shall not see the rain, but the, the valley shall be filled with water. Oh my God, that is supernatural. That's a supernatural move of God. That's a supernatural move of God. And that supernatural move of God is coming into your life in the name of Jesus. You shall not see the wind. You shall not see the rain. The valley shall be filled with water that you may drink both you and your cattle. First, I mean, Second Kings chapter 3, verse 17. Can I prophesy into your life in the name of Jesus Christ? As you begin to praise God, as you begin to worship him, a direction will come, a revelation will come, an inspiration will come. A light will shine in your darkness. Suddenly, you're going to find clarity. You want to find clarity. You want to be delivered out of your trouble. And I love what he said. He said, you shall not see the wind. You shall not see the rain. But your valley shall be filled with water that you and your cattle may drink. In the name of Jesus Christ, something supernatural is going to happen for you. As you begin to praise God, you're going to break out of that trouble. There's going to be solution. There's going to be answer for your trouble. I prophesy answer to your trouble, solution for your problems in the name of Jesus Christ. You're going to find that what you are lacking will come in abundance. What is not enough will become sufficient for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But the key, the price, the price you pay is to praise God, to invoke his presence. So any trouble, but I just showed you by the Spirit of God, evil spirit came upon King Saul. And these are people of influence. King Saul was a man of influence, a man of authority, a man of wealth. We saw Je 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 Joram and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom, three of them also kings and people of influence and authority. They had resources, but they had troubles. So trouble... Trouble comes to everybody. So it's not the trouble that comes against us actually that defeats us. It's the lack of deliverance in the midst of the trouble. And I'm giving to you now the tool, the, the, major, the first tool I'm giving to you today is the tool of praise. Praise, praising God, surrounding your life, your environment. Psalm 32 verse 8, it said, Thou art my hiding place, thou shalt preserve me from all trouble. Thou shalt surround me. Thou shalt compass me about with a song of deliverance. The song of deliverance. The song of deliverance is one of the price you pay. You can always get a song of deliverance, a song of healing. You, want, you are sick in your body. There are songs that worship God as a healer. You are the Lord that healed me. There are songs that you can sing that will invoke the presence of God as your healer. Whatever the trouble is, you want direction. There are, you know, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. You, you sing songs that will, you know, shut the devil, keep the devil, you know, obey from your environment and welcome in the presence of God. 
and your victory is going to be secured in the name of Jesus Christ. I see victory coming into your life. I see you experiencing your deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be free from all affliction, all pain in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes. I want to go ahead and continue to speak to you. This is faith talk. Let me get a breather for a minute. <laughs> Oh my God, this is Faith Talk and Miracle Moments with Bishop O. Alafe. I want you to, yes, you are watching Faith Talk and Miracle Moments with Bishop O. Alafe. Yes, you can, you can always connect with me anywhere you are in the world. You can connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. The information is on your screen. Yes, if you want to connect with me, you know, for uh, personal prophecy, for biblical guidance, you want me to give you a word to prophesy into your life or to help you you know, uh, overcome the battle you faced. If two of us shall agree on earth as touching anything we shall ask, it shall be done for us of our Father which is in heaven. I want you to, you can you look at the information on your screen. You can inbox me on Facebook. You can email me. My The email address is info at hoffman.org. You can text me. The, you can text the word love to that number, 678-940-6080. All these means are available for you to get in touch with me and you're going to be blessed mightily. You can also choose to visit our website. Let me put that on. For more information, you want to know more about our ministry, you want to know more about me, visit our, our website. You're going to get some more information there. I'm talking to you today about the prize for your deliverance, the prize for deliverance. Praise the Lord. I have, I have time, so let me take, uh, let me take one more. Praise God. Let me see if I can take one more with you today. Yes, we're looking at the price for deliverance. I've just given you the first price is to surround your life with songs of deliverance. Number two, you know, uh, this is the mission. This is what Jesus came to do. This was what Jesus announced, you know, in his mission. He said to preach deliverance to the captive. Uh, you know, and I'm saying captivity is real. Yes. Another, another example I want to give to you here. Is in Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3. How can a person be delivered? How can a person be delivered? How can a person express deliverance either from evil spirit, from forces of life, from trouble? We just saw trouble there. Look at here, uh, Mark chapter 3, verse 27. He said, No man can enter into the um into the house, into a strong man's house, strong man strong man and spoil his goods except if he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house strong man talk about strong conditions conditions that are strong situations forces that are strong a strong man's house you know forces that have taken hold of your dreams, your goals, forces that are blocking access to your destiny, to the fulfillment of your desires, your goals, you know, strong man. And when the Bible talks about a, the strong man here, it's principally talking about Satan. Satan is the strong man. You know, Satan, which is the devil, he has a ministry. His ministry is to you know, to resist, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He, he, he steals from people. He deceives people. The Bible talking about, you know, breaking the stronghold, the stronghold, the stronghold in the mind through deception. You know, the devil has robbed a whole lot of people through their reasoning, through deception of thoughts, through their mind, how you think. The Bible said, casting down imagination. You know, the stronghold, the stronghold. He said, we walk in the flesh. We do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pulling down stronghold. Stronghold is what the strong man uses. The strong man. The Bible identifies a strong man. Who can, no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his good except he first bind the strong man of the house. The devil, the devil is real. And he's a wicked devil. And he's a deceiver. 
you know, I told you that the devil's ministry, you know, is destruction, deception, oppression, you know, uh, that's what, and tormenting, he torments people. But how can you get what is yours? What has the enemy stolen from you? What has the devil robbed you of? Has he robbed you of your peace? Has he robbed you of your joy? Has he robbed you of your relationship? Has he robbed you of your finance? What is it that the enemy has robbed you of? Something you lost, not voluntarily, but you lost it because you, you couldn't help it. You couldn't help yourself. You couldn't help. It was like it was forcefully taken from you. If somebody has something that has been forcefully taken from your life, something that, you know, has you are, you are being robbed of, maybe your health, maybe your career, Maybe your dreams, maybe your goals, you, you, you are bad from being able to enter into what is yours, to possess your possession, to take delivery of your desires. What it is that the enemy has taken. The Bible says there's a strong man that is responsible. But how do you take back what the enemy has taken from you? That's the ministry of deliverance here. The Bible says, no man can bind the no man can enter into the house of a strong man except he first bind the strong man. So there is what we call the prayer of binding. You have to learn to bind forces that are resisting your advancement, forces that are resisting your victory, forces that are holding back whatever God has ordained for you. You have to bind them. You know, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus gave us the authority. Jesus said, I give you the keys of the kingdom that whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. You have to do the binding. God can bind them for you. You have to do the binding. But God has given us the authority to bind forces. So if you feel that anything that is due to you has been held back or stolen, if there are forces that seem to be you know, uh, keeping you out, holding you down, restraining you from what God has, what God has ordained from the dream, the goal, the desires you have in your life. How do you get what is yours? You have to learn to bind the strong man. You bind the devil. You bind the forces responsible in the realm of the spirit. That's why I said to you, life is both spiritual and physical. Don't just live your life in the natural. You have to operate in the realm of the spirit because all these things are real. Otherwise, Jesus wouldn't tell us about them. So you have to bind forces of darkness. You have to bind Satan. You have to bind the strong man. You have to decree and say, in the name of Jesus, I bind every devil, every force, every power, holding back what belongs to me. Any power, any storehouse, warehouse, where your you know dreams have been locked into, any city, any gate, you have to learn to bind. The Bible talks about binding the strong man. You know, a whole lot of people want to take what is theirs without binding the strong man. And the Bible says here in Mark 3, verse 27, no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his good. Except if us bind the strong man, then it will spoil his house. You have to learn to bind. You see, everything we want is already been made available. Anything you desire, God has already made it available. There are other forces that are trying to keep you back, keep you out, both in the physical and in the natural. But if you start attacking these things from the spiritual, I mean, both in the spiritual and in the natural, I beg your pardon. If you learn to start attacking this thing, both especially from the spiritual, the invisible realm, then you're going to have physical reality and manifestation. You're going to be able to assess. You know, oh, there are people who want to assess, is there a dreamland, a city, you know, a, a possession, an asset you want to have? Anything you want to have is existence somewhere. But there are forces that are caging them, making, making it impossible for you to assess them. So you have to bind the strong man of the house. You have to bind Satan. And until you bind Satan, because God has put us in charge, 
Oh my God. God has put man in charge of life affairs. God has put us in charge. We are in charge. And God, Jesus said, I give to you the keys of the kingdom. Matthew, 16, Matthew 16, verse 16 to 18. I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven that whatsoever you shall bind on earth. Don't just leave your dreams, your goals, desires to wishes. I think the English proverb says, if wishes were horses, even beggars will ride. If wishes were horses. That, and that's a very true statement. You don't leave your desire to chance. In, in fact, if you leave your dreams to chance, then you have no chance. You have to engage this weapon of warfare that God has given unto us. You have to learn to bind Satan because Satan is running loose on rampage. The devil is real. It's afflicting people, holding back what is due to a person. To bind means to tie, to tie up, to tie down. Yes, to fasten with chains and fetters. You know, fetters, you, you change the devil, you can change the devil. Be because if the devil is not chained, then you can't assess. Don't forget, oh, I wish I had time. And I'm even going to take this on my next uh, teaching, you know. The devil, the Bible says the devil is the God of this world. So God actually made this world, this beautiful world, you know, with all his system for man. But Adam, the first man, sold the earth. He sold the world to the devil. He gave the devil the influence over the world. So the devil is the God of this world. So he's the one that locks people out of what God has ordained for them. So for you to be able to get anything in this world that God has ordained for you, you have to learn to bind the, the, the forces, the evil forces or human forces. The Bible called it the strong man. Strong men are usually influenced by spirit. That's why I see somebody say, I can't get a job. Why can't you get a job? Why can't you get a job? It's because there is a, a strong man there that is, you know, who, who doesn't want you to get the job. How can't you say, I can't get the car? Why not? There's a strong man. I can't get that house. Oh, I can't get married. What is it that you desire that you have not been able to get? There is a strong man at the gate. There is a strong man at the gate. Yes. You know, it influences human personalities, but essentially the, the, the force is the satanic power behind the strong man. So your access into your dream, whether it's, a, whether it's finances, your dream home, your dream car, your dream marriage, your dream job, your business, whatever it is, it's a no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his good, except if as bind the strong man of the house. You must learn to bind the strong man of the earth. Let me read a scripture here. Oh my God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. In Revelation chapter 20, this is very interesting here, I, and I trust that you are getting something out of this. In Revelation chapter 20, the Bible says, and I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. So you see, Satan has to be bound. <laughs> you say you don't believe in Satan? Satan is a wicked, he's a strong man. He keeps people out of their inheritance, out of God's blessings for their life. He shuts the gate into people's possession. So you have to contend with him and you have to, you know, bind him. You have to bind him. You have to learn to bind Satan, my God. You have to bind him in order to be able to spoil his good, to take what belongs to you. You have to bind the strong man. You have to bind him in the name of Jesus Christ. You have to bind him. And I'm looking at my time. I'm going to continue, you know, uh, this teaching again next week. I don't want to rush it, you know. 
I believe that, you know, if you could get something from what I'm saying to you, that look, you can be free. You can be free from trouble. You can have victory in your trouble. You can possess your possession. You can enter into your inheritance. Whatever God has ordained for you can become yours. God is not denying you, but I'm showing you how you can be free. And I'm going to continue this teaching, but I want to pray for you right now. I want to pray. I want to pray. If you feel troubled in your life, and if you feel trouble, if there's any trouble in your life, if you feel that, look, there are some things troubling you, whether in your health, in your mind, in your spirit, you feel trouble around you. I believe that the power of God will set you free. I've been, if you've been listening, there's a worship song going on around this place. There's a worship song that, that is surrounding me. The song of liberty, the song of deliverance being all around me. And it's all around you in your home. So I believe we have invoked the presence of God. So I want to pray for you right now. Because your hour of liberty has come. Your hour of deliverance has come. In the name of Jesus. I want to come against troubles. Father Lord, I pray for this person who has been troubled. Trouble in his, in his or her mind. Trouble in, in, in his or her life. With this person who is facing some big trouble that you've not been able to break free from. I pray for you today. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command satanic hold to be broken. In the name of Jesus, I command Satan's stronghold around your life, whatever, is en en whatever has encaged your life and closed your life that has not allowed you to walk into what God has for you. I command those forces broken in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you today. Be free from trouble. Be free from that trouble. Whatever it is, by the power in the name of Jesus, be free. Be free. Be free. Be free right now in the name of Jesus. And I'm praying for, for, for somebody who has confusion. You don't know what to do. You don't know where to turn. You don't know what to do. You don't know where to turn. You feel right now that, look, you feel stranded. You feel stranded. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy direction. I prophesy victory for you. In the name of Jesus, receive inspiration. Come out of that depression. Come out of that anxiety. Come out of that fear. Enter into the good things that God has for you. Right now, I pray for you right now. I prophesy that in your valley, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let your valley be filled with plenty, with abundance. That low area of your life, may there be ideas, solution. Yes, answer to the pain and the concern of your life right now. I pray in the name of Jesus for a miracle for you. Receive it. Receive it by faith. That's God speaking to you. You've heard the word of God. That means your hour of liberty has come. I want to pray for somebody else here right now. You are listening to me. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You are not born again. Jesus came to set the captives free. Yes, if you are not under uh, the influence and the authority of Jesus Christ, then Satan will continue to lord it over you. But thanks be to God, who wants to deliver you from the power of darkness today and translate you into the kingdom of his dear son, where you can have liberty and enjoy redemption and the blessings of God. So I want you to say this prayer, man. I want you to mean it in your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, today. I ask you to come into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. Say it. Say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner, but I ask you to forgive me my sin and give me a new beginning. Say, Jesus, I confess you now as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for dying for me and thank you for saving me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. Congratulations, my friend. If you said that prayer, it means you just got born again. I want to welcome you to the family of God. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Let me pray for you. Father, Lord, I pray for this friend of mine. I pray that your grace that saved this one, let that same grace keep and preserve this one in the name of Jesus. I pray right now, oh God, for this person, oh God. Lord, let your grace that saved this one, let your grace keep and preserve this person in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Congratulations, my friend. If you said that prayer, it means you just got born again. Let me hear from you. Let me know you said that prayer. Let me know you gave your heart to the Lord. I want you to email me. I want you to text me and, you know, email me, text me, or call me. The information is right on your screen. Let me know what God has done for you. You can email me. You can text me on Facebook. You can inbox me on Facebook. I beg your pardon. You can email me or you can text me. Let me know you gave your life 
to Jesus today. I want to send a material to you, a material to you that will be a blessing to you. And I'm also going to commit to help you in your walk with God. Glory be to God. Congratulations. Let me hear for you from you in the name of Jesus. Father, let your grace that saved this person, let that same grace keep and preserve this one in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I rejoice with you, my friend. Before I go, I want to give you an opportunity to plant your financial seed into the good ground of this ministry. The word of God says, if we have ministered to you spiritual things, we ought to reap your carnal things. I have brought you the word of God, and I believe that something good has begun in your life. So I want you to consider sowing your financial seed to help me to continue to do what God has called me to do. Yes, when you give, every when you give, it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. God will cause men to give to your bosom. So sow your financial seed today. Anywhere you are in the world, just go to our website. Hoffan.org. That's the, the information is right there on your screen. H O F F A N dot O R G. Go and plant your financial seed. Give generously. You can give by cash app. The information is there. Or you can text to give. If you want to use the text to give option, please make sure you first text the amount you want to give to the number you see on your screen 770 659 7713. For the text to give option, first text the amount you want to give to that number. Then wait, wait for a text back. Then you can fill your information. That's how we used to test to give. But you can give by cash app or you can give by PayPal. If you go to our website, you can often.org. You have you know options by which you can give, and God will bless you. Let me pray for your giving and pray over your seed. Father, thank you for this person who has made up his or mind to give today. And this person who is still considering giving in the name of Jesus. I pray that you steer the heart of this person to the truth of your word, that when we give, it shall be given unto us, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Lord, as this person sows, let harvest, meet harvest in the life of this person. Let abundance flow back and flow into the life of this person in the name of Jesus. I give you praise. I give you glory. I thank you, O oh God, for doing it. And we call it done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Glory be to God. God bless you. Thank you. May the Lord bless you and multiply the seed you sow in the name of Jesus Christ. I also want to invite you to come and worship God with us anywhere you are in the world. Our services are global right now. You can go to our website, orphan.org. If you're in the USA, you're in the Atlanta metro area. We have two powerful locations in the Atlanta metro area. Come and join our services, and I'll be looking forward to seeing you. Go to the website, orphan.org, uh, and you can also join us on Zoom. Yes, just go to the website, click the Zoom access, and you can, you'll be in. Just take note that our times are Eastern Standard Time, and we look forward to seeing you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my wife, for being a part of this service and itemizing all these things we've been saying. Yes, thank you so much for being a part of it. The Lord bless you uh, mightily, woman of God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right. Okay, I got, I got to sign out right now. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Um, on And don't forget to keep watching, please. FMTVLive.com. 24-7, you on the go. Keep watching. Right now, if you go to FMTV Live, there's a now word that's going to come your way. And if you're watching on FMTV Live, you know, wait for the next word that is coming. God bless you. Spread the good news. If you're watching on uh, YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Until I come your way again next time, this is Bishop O. Olafe reminding you that Jesus loves you and so do I. Shalom. God bless you. <laughs>